thirsteth for God. Psalm 42, verse 2. My soul, my soul thirsteth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, where no water is, Psalm 63 verse 1. Oh, the tragic bankruptcy, the tragic bankruptcy of truth in most pulpits across the world today. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the word of the Lord. Amos 8 verse 11 says, They shall run to and fro to seek a word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Fearful words. Fearful words. But my soul... My soul thirsteth for God. If any man, any man thirst, let him come unto me. Let him come unto me. John 7 verse 37. The fountain of life. The fountain of life, of spiritual life. Psalm 36, verse 9. Everyone, everyone that thirsteth, come. Come ye to the waters, the waters, the spiritual waters of God. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. You'll never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him as a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4 verse 13 promises. The unsaved, the unsaved in their masses tragically thirst after filthy water from the corrupt springs that is the defiled, polluted waters and wells in this sinful world. Proverbs 25, verse 26 says, They drink iniquity, that is sin, like water, like water. Job 15, verse 14. Are you one of them? You need to be careful here tonight, sir. Don't play the fool with God. Are you one of them? You need to answer God now and yourself. They drink sin, iniquity, like water, God says. Oh, depart from iniquity. God cries in 2 Timothy 2 verse 9. Depart from iniquity. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, Jesus Christ promises or lied. If it isn't so, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, literally, they shall be satisfied. 
Only God knows what will satisfy you and is the only thing he holds out now. This will satisfy you, not that, that you're searching after in the emptiness of your heart and life. They shall be filled. They shall be satisfied. Matthew 5, verse 6. Wherefore do ye thirst for that which satisfieth not? God asks in Isaiah 55, verse 2. Wherefore do ye thirst for that which satisfieth not? I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame and nothing satisfying there I found but to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came where springs of living water did abound. O oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free. Where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. And then, then for the rest of your life, draw water out of the wells of salvation daily. Isaiah 12 verse 3. Draw water out of the wells of salvation Daily, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Jude verse 20, that ye may grow spiritually from strength to strength. Psalm 84 verse 7, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. In the inner man. Ephesians 3 verse 16, so that the inward man is renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16. Beloved, we are commanded, we are commanded by God to draw water that is spiritual drink. Exodus 17 verse 5. Daily, daily. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1. Primarily from the word of God. Psalm 18 verse 2 tells us which is able to build you up, which is able to build you up spiritually. Acts 20, verse 32. Seek ye out of the book. Seek ye out of the book of the law and read Isaiah 34, verse 16. Desire the sincere milk the milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. 1 Peter 2, verse 2. And meditate therein. Meditate therein day and night. Psalm 1, verse 2. For man doth not, literally cannot, live, survive by bread, that is, food, physical food alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, and that's here, sir, all recorded. And don't add to it, and don't take away from it, but you need it. Meditate there in day and night, Psalm 1 verse 2. For man doth not, cannot live, cannot survive by bread, by food alone, but by every word. Every word, trust me, get through this book a few hundred times. You'll realize why God said that. Every word is needed. Don't bury it. Don't neglect it. God, you 
yourself, yeah? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, verse 4. For faith cometh by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17 tells us. And hope. Hope. Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Psalm 119, verse 49. I have hope. In thy word. Psalm 119, 74. And for comfort. The comfort that cometh by the word of God. Mine eyes fail. Mine eyes fail for thy word. Saying, when wilt thou comfort me? Psalm 119, verse 82. This is my comfort. In my affliction which every one of us will face. This is my comfort in my affliction. Psalm 119, verse 50. Thy comforts, thy comforts delight my soul. Psalm 94, verse 19. For healing, which you all need and I needed desperately time and again, for healing from the wounds we will suffer in this cruel, unjust world as Christians. For healing from the wounds we will all suffer in this cruel and unjust world. He hath sent forth his healing word. We all learn that. Psalm 107. I met a lady, professing Christian, smashed, crushed, looked like a battered bird. How she goes to psychologists and psychiatrists and in these homes. I said, lady, why don't you let God be your psychiatrist? What? Let me tell you something, lady. No one's told you this before. One verse from this book that you know is from God to your heart, and you know, will heal you more all your wounds than ten years with a psychiatrist. For healing from the wounds we will all suffer in this cruel world, he hath sent forth his healing word unto us. Psalm 107, verse 20. For peace in a world where everyone's tormented. Just look at their faces starting in the church. <laughs> which is tragic, for peace, great peace, not just peace, it comes, my peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth, as peace with this and that, and yoga, and looking at a tree for 10 hours, why are you doing that, peace, one minute after you get up, you're in torment, what good is that, come to Christ, Oh, God's word for peace, great peace, God says, have they which love thy law. When that was written, this is the law, not just the Ten Commandments, but there was a whole section referred to as the law. Great peace of they which love. And now we have God's full word, not just the law that they had, but great peace of they which love that which God had given at that stage, Psalm 119, verse 165. For guidance, which we all need in this day where we so many make a mistake in every avenue of life and land up crawling in shame. Oh, for guidance, thy testimonies, that is thy commandments, also are my counselors. There's safety in many counselors. Let me tell you something. Not a hundred men sitting there telling you what to do. Get one verse and then God confirming and say, oh, this is God. This is God. For counsel. And guidance, thy testimonies, thy commandments are my counselors. There's safety here. 
Psalm 119, verse 24, for victory, for victory over Satan and sin. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, Father, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. John 17, verse 15. Verse 17, sanctify them. That is, keep them from the evil, the evil one, and the evil he holds out to them. Sanctify them, keep them from the evil. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. John 17, verse 15 and 17. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. To the degree you choke yourself in this book, sir, to that degree God, the Holy Ghost, will give you faith, give you a sanctity, a separation, keep you. You will hate the evil. Love the good to the degree you're choked in this book. You can be a preacher and love the evil. So many have proven to do that and hate the good. Why? Because they neglect this book for God's work. Even God's work becomes sin. Your greatest sin. God's work. If it keeps you from this book, this is everything. Daily. Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. For survival... Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in my affliction, in all my troubles that Satan and his servants have thrown at me. I would have perished, God. But you survive. As long as this book is open, the devil can't destroy you. He gets hope if he sees you close this book in disillusionment and walk away. And watch the ruined lives across this world, beginning with evangelical preachers across this world who lie on their faces now destroyed. Don't tell me it can't happen. I refuse to bury my head in the sand with everybody else that'll defend doctrines, but not reach in truth and compassion with this book to everyone. Unless thy law had been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. Psalm 119, verse 92. Survival. Therefore, with joy, shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation, God says. My greatest joy in life. The God of this book. Of this word who gives these words. The letter killeth but the spirit giveth life. The rhema come forward. God and you know it. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water. Out of the wells of salvation. As I 12 verse 3 tells us. But. But. If you. If you. Neglect. To be renewed in the inner man day by day. You will swiftly renew your thirst for the sins of your past life. I want to repeat that. Forget the rest of the sermon. Just remember this and the devil will tremble for the rest of your life. If you neglect to be renewed in the inner man day by day is your greatest Discipline and priority in life every day that nothing will touch that the devil or man does. If you neglect to do that, to be renewed in the inner man, that takes time. And time costs, doesn't it? Even the time you get to bed determines the time you'll get up. If you neglect to be renewed, in the inner man, day by day, you will swiftly renew your thirst for the sins of your past, I guarantee you. If a Christian thirsts to seek satisfaction again in the world, 
the things God took him out of because he was in such misery and shame and brokenness and he forgot all about that. If a Christian thirsts back, thirsts back to the world to seek satisfaction again in the world, there is only one reason he neglected to diligently feed from the word of God daily. You will not find another reason, I guarantee you, if you're honest before God. There's only one reason he neglected to diligently feed from the word of God daily, to drink from the wells of salvation. We need to be very careful here, beloved. This daily discipline is imperative and vital for your survival and mine spiritually. Now tonight I want, I want to take us all on a fearful, fearful study of this holy book. Tonight I want to take us all on a fearful study through the Old Testament to carefully and prayerfully consider God's dealings with his faltering people. And we must always remember when opening the pages of the Old Testament that these things were written and preserved for us, for our spiritual protection. Romans 15 verse 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, two-thirds of the Bible, were written for our learning that we through patience, that's perseverance, not to give up, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All these things happened unto them for examples. And they were written for our admonition. That's our instruction and our protection. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11. These things were examples to the intent that we should not lust again. After evil things as they also lusted. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 6 says. In Exodus 14, verse 15, in Exodus 14, verse 15, God cried, Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward, that they go forward. But they went backward. They went backward and not forward. Jeremiah 7, verse 24 says, Have you? Have you? Answer God. I dare you. Answer yourself. That takes courage, isn't it? To be honest in church and not take another step in life till you've laid everything down. God's confronting you often seeking with your soul before you walk out of that door to stagger the powers of hell every step you take till your death, till your last breath. That's possible, you know. They went backward, not forward. Jeremiah 7, have you? They tragically looked back. They looked back to what God had mercifully delivered them from. Do you? Now God's looking at you, but you have to acknowledge it, you know. Exodus 16, verse 3, the children of Israel said, would to God we had died in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. This, of course, grieved God greatly. Be careful here. Be careful here. Remember Lot's wife. Who do you think God doesn't mean it when he warns you? Remember Lot's wife. Luke 17, verse 32. If any man look back, he is not fit for the kingdom of God. No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, verse 62. Bringing iniquity to remembrance. Looking back. 
for you. Bringing iniquity to remembrance. Numbers 5 verse 15. Thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth. Ezekiel 23 verse 21. Even preachers. Let us be careful here. Lest after I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway is a terrible warning. And you dare not deny it in the Bible, preacher. Or you will end up in the heap of evangelical preachers across the world that have caused millions to turn their backs on God. Lest after I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27. When Israel was a child, that is a youth, I called him out of Egypt, God said. Hosea 11 verse 1. But my people tragically are bent on backsliding. Hosea 11 verse 7 says. They're bent to perpetual backsliding. There you go, back again. When you're not with Christians looking at you, singing and walking and leaping and praising God, and what else don't you do? There you go, out of the church door, back. To what no one knows you're doing. And you put the television on. And you put the internet on. Pick up magazines when you walk into places you shouldn't be walking into because you lose your testimony and credibility to the day you die. They'll never forget. Listen, they're bent to perpetual going on and on backsliding. Jeremiah 8 verse 5 warns, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water, nothing that will satisfy them. Jeremiah 2 verse 13. Have you? What are you busy when you're not with Christians? What are you busy that God and Satan see? You believe will satisfy you. And God chastened them so as a nation. God chastened them so as a nation. Jeremiah 2 verse 14 says, Psalm 80 verse 6, Thou feedest them with the bread of tears and give us them tears to drink. You honestly think God will sit back and let you go on? What God is he then in righteousness if he does? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears and give us them tears to drink. Psalm 80 verse 6. And then he asks them in verse 17 of that chapter, Hast thou not procured this unto thyself? Did you not bring this on yourself? In that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God? 2 Chronicles 33 verse 9, The Lord spoke to Manasseh, the king of Israel, and to his people, but they would not hearken. Do you know that's possible? Don't you think that's fearful? You know God's speaking to you, don't you, lady? Don't you even care? The Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Is that you? It's possible. Tragic, it's fearful. They would not hearken to Chronicles 33, verse 9, verse 11. Wherefore all these things came upon them. Verse 12. 
And when he was in affliction, he sought the Lord his God. Be careful here. You think God's looking at you and isn't going to make you remember these words if you're smiling at God's sacred word now. When Manasseh was in affliction that God brought on him, he sought the Lord his God. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance not to be repented of. God knows what to do. In Proverbs 14 verse 14, God warns us that the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. His own reasoning, futile reasoning, futile twisted thoughts. Psalm 94 verse 11, Malachi 3 verse 14, you have said it is vain to serve the Lord. It's worthless. Malachi 1 verse 13, ye have also said, behold, what a weariness it is. And have snuffed at it, despised it. Have you? Or does God write these things down, recording all these things for nobody? Oh, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, Hebrews 12 verse 5 warns. God is not unrighteous, Hebrews 6 verse 10 says. Verse 29 of Malachi then says, Yet saith the house of Israel that the way of the Lord is not righteous, is not fair. Are you saying that? Ezekiel 18, verse 29, are not your ways unrighteous, unjust? Therefore, verse 30 says, I will judge you, O house of Israel. And remember, he's speaking to us so it wouldn't be in this book, child of God. Be careful what you do when you hear God's word and you know God's speaking to you. Therefore, I will judge you, every one, according to his ways. And when he slew them, then they sought him. They returned and inquired early after him. They sought him diligently, swiftly. Psalm 78, verse 34, when he slew them, then they sought him. They returned and inquired early after him. Psalm 78, verse 34, in their affliction, in their affliction, they will seek me early. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Hosea 5 verse 15 says, they rebelled and vexed that has grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. And he fought against them. Isaiah 63 verse 10 warns, the Lord was as an enemy. Lamentations 2 verse 5, I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. It's the devil, you say, Satan. Is it? Just look at your life, child of God. Is it not God? Haven't you brought this on yourself and God's only way to stop you is this in love to you? His harshest blow throbs with love beyond any human capacity of de revealing love. For he is God and he doesn't love, he is love. There's a great difference here. I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thy iniquity, of thy sin, Jeremiah 30, verse 14. And when he slew them, then they sought him. Then they sought him. Psalm 78, verse 34. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Psalm 119, verse 7. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. Psalm 119, verse 67. Remember, therefore, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Revelation 2, verse 4. Look unto the rock whence thou art hewn. And the hole... The pit whence thou art digged, Isaiah 51 verse 1, look back 
Look back and remember, child, the day when thou was born. Ezekiel 16, verse 4, verse 5. Of course, he's speaking to Israel, but to you and me also. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit knows and how to make you know this is you. It was recorded for in case this happened to you. Remember the day when I was born. God says, look back and remember. Ezekiel 16, verse 4, verse 5. None I pitied thee to have compassion on thee. Thou wast cast out to the loathing of thy person. Verse 6, and when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted, defiled, struggling in thine own blood, I said unto thee, I said unto thee, live, live. Verse 8, yea, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, and thou becamest mine. Do you remember that, child? I haven't forgotten. Thou becamest mine. Verse 9, then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee and anointed thee with oil, God says. Verse 10, I clothed thee also. Verse 14, and thy renown went forth among the heathen for the beauty Thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness. What I did in your life shook this world. Don't you remember? Beginning with your family. Verse 15, but thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. When thou wast naked and bare and polluted, struggling in thine own blood, thou hast tragically forgotten the horror that is the lewdness, the sadness, the emptiness of your unsaved life. Verse 43, and because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but hast fretted me, that's aggrieved me, grieved and angered me, therefore I also will recompense thy way upon thy head. Don't play the fool with God here, young girl. It's God's word. Because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but hast fretted me, grieved me, therefore I also will recompense thy way upon thy head. Because ye have made your iniquity be to be remembered. Ezekiel 21 verse 24 verse 43. Therefore I also will recompense thy way upon thy head. Verse 59. I will even deal with thee as thou hast done. Which has despised the oath the breaking in breaking the covenant I made with thee. Verse 61. Then thou shalt remember thy way. And be ashamed and confounded for all that thou hast done against me. Verse 63. Ezekiel 23, verse 27. For I will make thy lewdness to cease from thee, so that thou shalt not remember Egypt any more. God says. Now tonight, I would compassionately ask every one of you, have you also for foolishly forsaken, forgotten the shame, sorry, foolishly forgotten the shame and the tragic state of your unsaved state, the emptiness and sorrow of your un... Has the devil, in his incredible power, made you forget how empty and sad your unsaved days were? But, beloved, be careful here. There's a terrible warning held out before all of us. In Proverbs 15, verse 10, warning us that correction is grievous to him that forsaketh thy way. 
He hateth reproof. He hateth reproof, God says. The people turneth not unto him that smiteth them. Isaiah 9 verse 13. They hearkened not, Jeremiah 7 verse 24, nor received correction, verse 28. Proverbs 29 verse 1. He that being often reproved by God, that is contextually, and hardeneth his neck, contextually his heart. I haven't got the courage to read the second part of the verse. God had pled with them. In Jeremiah 6 verse 16, stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths, where is the good way? And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said in their hearts, we will not walk therein, even before the message is over. Is your heart saying that? No ways. They said, we will not walk therein. And the first step they take out of that door, Satan and God sees you mean it. And everyone that knows you in truth. Jeremiah 31 verse 22. How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? How long? What more must I do? To stop you. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Return, O backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will heal thee. I will heal thee of thy backsliding. Hosea 14, verse 4. Only, only acknowledge thine iniquity. It has to be you to yourself first, then to God. That costs, doesn't it? I've got to change. I've got to lose this friend sitting next to me walk away from me the moment I do only acknowledge to yourself and acknowledge to God thine iniquity Jeremiah 3 verse 13 declare thou that thou mayest be justified Isaiah 43 verse 26 staggering words take with you words God says turn to the Lord say unto him take away my iniquity God waits for you to say that from your heart and he'll do it I'll heal you. Whoso confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 verse 13 promises. Humble yourselves therefore in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Your greatest danger in life if you're backslidden is if you refuse to do that. <laughs> Through pride. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall, God promises, or oh God lied. And he cannot lie. He'll do this. He shall lift you up. And the whole world will see it, and Satan will tremble and flee from you. So draw nigh to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. God will put him to flight. James 4, verse 10. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. Lamentations 5 verse 21. Turn us again, O God. Psalm 80 verse 3. I remember the days of old. I remember them. Psalm 143 verse 5. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Psalm 51 verse 12. You may be sitting here tonight in hopelessness. And despair as Hagar did. But God mercifully opened her eyes. And perhaps through this sermon, he has opened your eyes to give you hope again. That you could actually become vitally real with God and stagger the powers of hell every step you take till you die if you stay right with God. God 
God opened her eyes, and perhaps through this sermon tonight, he's opened your eyes mercifully to give you hope. We read in Genesis 21 from verse 1 to 20 of Hagar's despair and sorrow and resignation for her and her son's death. Verse 14, Hagar was cast out and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Verse 15, and no under water was spent, as used up. Verse 16, and she sat down and lift up her voice and wept. Is that where you are? Some of you. Where no one's looking. But God heard her cry, and he hears yours tonight. Verse 17, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, fear not, Hagar. Friend, does God not call out to your heart right now through the sermon the same words? I'm not going to leave you in this state, but I wait for you now. You see, God doesn't force love. He doesn't press buttons. That's not love. He waits for your choice. Even if you're backslidden, you have to choose. Verse 10, God then opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled that bottle with water. Oh, friend, has God not also opened your eyes here tonight to the wells of salvation that you need to draw from once again and never neglect till the day you die? He that hath mercy on them shall lead them back to the springs of living water. Isaiah 59 verse 10 says, but that's if you want him tonight to do that. Revelation 3 verse 1, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest spiritually and art dead. Dead. Truth. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. What a warning from God. So iniquity shall not be your ruin, O house of Israel. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Do you know when you sit under God's word and the Holy Ghost uses his word and you know you have to do with God, it's impossible not to have to make a decision. You decide before you say another word or take another step, and that decision is recorded in heaven by God. And 